Welcome back. It's day 16. Did I lose any weight? Tenth of a kilo. Not bad. I'm keeping track of it every day. I'm even building a screenshot of photographs of all the weights by day. Doesn't look like much now, but what about nine months from now or a year from now or six months from now? Might be more impressive, especially if I ever get down to my true weight. Now, today we want to talk a little bit about something different. Oh, by the way, last night I cooked a chuck steak to 55 degrees internal temperature. It, the taste was delicious. It was well, well seasoned. The air fryer did a fantastic job. Is it as good as ribeye? No. Will I be buying more chuck steak, chuck eyes? Probably not. Uh, I'll probably just go for the ribeye. But if I couldn't afford the ribeye, and I wanted to save about 30% or so, I could go with the chuck eye. I was able to chew it. It wasn't like chewing shoe leather. Uh, so a chuck eye steak is, you know, just a notch down in tenderness from the ribeye steak. Now that two inch ribeyes that we got from a local grower here, unbelievable good. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about instant gratification in the world today. And maybe you haven't read the book, The Fourth Turning. It was written in 1997 by a guy named Neil. Neil Howe, I think, is, is the author. But it's a very fascinating book. And we're in the, the seculum of the fourth turning. I won't go too deep into it because you almost have to read the book or listen to the audio book, which is like 62 hours on the audio book. And it's, it's in depth. But it seems like our generation that we're in right now, not necessarily generation, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm of one generation and a young child's of another generation. No, I'm not talking that. I'm talking of our times. And the fourth turning started occurring somewhere around 2010 through 2030. That is the 20-year cycle of the fourth turning. Every seculum has about four turnings. Well, every seculum does have four turnings, which represents four generations. And four generations is typically a long human lifespan, like 80-plus years. So we're in the fourth turning right now. And what I want to talk about is instant gratification and lack of patience. Where did we go so differently about instant gratification? I mean, somebody goes into to the bathroom and the toilet doesn't flush right. They get all upset and they want it fixed like right now. Get that plumber here right now. Well, I have a story about what it was like and what the mood of, of people were like. Let's go back to like 1987, 1988 time frame, which was in the beginning of the third turning. I have a friend named Paul Schroeder. We were going out on a boat ride. For a whole weekend, big weekend planned on the river. A bunch of my friends all brought their boats down. We're gonna we're gonna be down on a boat all weekend, sleep on the boats, uh, cook cook food on the shore. You know, we were gonna have a good old time, and we were gonna go up river, 
We left for this trip, and we were gone no more than 30 minutes, and his boat, one of the engines blew. Just quit. I mean, it, it just blew up, and we weren't running hard or anything. Now, so many people today in the fourth turning would be just absolutely devastated. I want to say, this is, I'm going home. I mean, my, you can't run fast, you, you know. Best I can do is hop along at about five mile an hour with a broken motor, and, and you know, they'd be all upset. Not Paul. He didn't even bat an eye. He looked at the motor for about a minute and a half and said, oh, well, it quit. He lifted the, he pushed the button, lifted the out the outboard section out of the water as much as he could, and he just said, go on up river. You don't have to go as slow as I do. I'll catch up. And uh, that was the way it was. When did we get in this fourth turning to be so impatient? And I, let's bring that back to carnivore. Everybody wants to do everything and be instantly graphite. I'm no different. I've been trained to want instant gratification. Let me let me show you something right here. Right there. Nice iPhone. Instant gratification. You need to know something? Punch it up on the iPhone. You know, in the 80s, let's go back to 1988. Was no smartphones. For the most part, most people didn't even have a cell phone in 1988. They were around. They were in cars. Not many people had a handheld one. They were like a brick, and they cost about a fortune back then. So now we got the smartphone. We got instant gratification on anything we want. You want to? You you need something from the store? Go on a cell phone. Hit up Amazon, it'll be here today or tomorrow. Instant gratification. In 1988, if I needed information, I had to wait till the public library was open. Go look it up. Had to go to the card index file and pull out cards that were in, in little drawers with the Dewey Decimal System on and get a number and then Walk down the aisles and find where that row was and find the book on the shelf and read it. We didn't have instant gratification. And so many people going on a carnivore journey will get trapped in desperation and disgust looking for instant gratification of the benefits that will take time. I'm not the wisest guy in the world, but I'm not the dumbest either. Going carnivore is a lifestyle change, and it can provide lifelong benefits But it is an instant gratification. Now, I've, at this point, in day 16, 17, day 17, I've lost 33.1 pounds. I want to verify that, make sure I'm right, because 33.7 pounds I've lost, 15.3 kilos. But I only lost 0 0.1 kilo or 0.2 pounds from yesterday to today. But these things, they come and they go. And, you know, I might go one day. I see one day where I lost 1.2 kilo or 2.6 pounds. And the next day I only lost a one-tenth of a kilo not 1.2 kilos. We want instant gratification 
and we're not going to get it, and you might as well get that through your head. You know what the gratification is? The gratification comes later. The gratification comes when you can drop a dress size or drop a pants size. When you can go from a 5X shirt down to a 4X shirt. And then a 3X shirt. I had one gentleman write me the most detailed, exacting comment on my videos. And he explained where he went from a double XL shirt and now he's getting into mediums. Went from a 44 inch waist to a 32 inch waist. That didn't happen day one, it didn't happen day 15, and it didn't happen day 30. It's just one inch at a time. Just one little bit at a time. That's all you get. Smartphones has ruined this entire period in our history. Yes, they're wonderful. They're great. You can't get them out of your hand. I'm no different. I think Noi, is, Noi has her phone tattooed to a palm of her hand. I don't think she can get it out. I'm not sure. But, yeah, it is what it is. My only point in doing this is just to let you think about it. Let you think about the fact that in my father's generation, he didn't complain about anything. He never complained. He just did it. If the sink was stopped up, he just fixed it. He just got it done. He didn't complain about it. Today, people complain about every freaking thing. We're in a different turning. We were in the first turning. And let me, I can't stress high enough. The book's been revised since 1997, but so much of it goes back history 400, 500 years and just shows how all over the world, the entire world cannot escape the turnings within a seculum. And this goes all the way back to the Romans and Greeks and stuff. Uh, let me tell you, if you read the book, you almost have to read it twice to because some of the thought patterns are so deep. So I can't, the fourth turning, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, but it's only for those people who like to think. Because there's a lot to think about. But the one thing I'm going to ask you to think about is, and help me with, because I'm not immune to it either. I love instant gratification. That's the reason I got fat in the first place. Grab that ice cream. I get instant gratification. I get that sugar high right off the bat. Grab those pretzels. Hell, it was just a month ago I was driving across all the way across the town here looking for pretzels in search of pretzels because they're hard to find in Thailand. I ended up with pretzels in the cupboard and when I went carnivore, I got rid of them. Give them away. Just today, we gave frozen french fries away to the pool cleaners. Okay, They appreciate it. They don't make a ton of money. They'll take them home and feed them to their family. If you're not fat, some people can tolerate it. The young can tolerate it. Those that are extremely accurate, active can tolerate it. I can't. I've got friends who can. They're going to be thin their entire life. They can eat like they got a hollow leg. And they'll still be thin. Well, that's their genes. They may end up with other problems, but their genes kept them thin. Yeah, I don't even know what my ethnic background is. 
Maybe, uh, maybe I'm part Eskimo. Who knows? But my genes can't tolerate the fruits and the vegetables. I already know this. I feel so much better. Last night I had that check steak. Today it's, uh, while I'm making this, it's 2 p.m. I haven't had anything to eat this morning yet. Why? Because I'm not hungry. That steak filled me up. Did I snack last night? No. Is it because I, you know, tied myself to a chair, put handcuffs on so I couldn't get out of it and get to the refrigerator to get a snack? No. When I'm hungry, I eat, and I eat till I'm full. I ain't counting any calories. It's just what am I eating? Beef, butter, bacon and eggs, ribeye steaks, briskets. Every every week I have wild Atlantic caught salmon once a week. I'm going to get some liver. I don't have any liver. Pork, chicken, but not a whole lot of pork or a whole lot of chicken. Just, I don't know, once a week. Sometimes that might be the, uh, you've already eaten and you 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 don't feel stuffed and you, you feel like you want to eat. Maybe you just eat some chicken uh, instead of another steak. Maybe you take some chicken and pop in the air fryer. A little bit lighter on you, but thou set feel the feel the need. But eat till you're full, and then don't eat until your stomach's telling you, "God damn boy, put some food in here." What you try and starve me to death? I don't want to try to starve anybody. When when I feel hungry, I eat till I full. Eat till you're full. I always have done that my whole life, but it was always eating junk. Pretzels, potato chips, Oreos, you know, fruits and vegetables and pasta. Love spaghetti. Not spaghetti O's, spaghetti. Yeah, spaghetti and, you know, spaghetti sauce. Uh, salads full of sugar. Yeah, I'd make a salad. I'd have lettuce and tomatoes and onions and peppers and everything in this salad. It was delicious. And then I'd smother it with salad dressing. Now, if you look on it, the first ingredient's probably water and the second ingredient's sugar. High fructose corn syrup. Now, I had a salad. Couldn't taste the lettuce. All you could taste was the Thousand Island dressing. Boo. Boo on me. Fatso. I want to thank you all for the comments you've been giving me and for the encouragement and for the help and for the tips. And those tips are being read by other people. Sometimes I even read them as part of one of my daily releases. Now, I know this has been a, another one of my 18-minute videos. And the average video gets watched like four or five minutes. So I know for the most part, most people haven't watched this far. But if you have and want to drop a comment so I watch the end, I'd appreciate that. And some of the best stuff comes at the end. That's all, folks.